Well, hello, and thank you for joining me. I am so excited you're here. If we don't know each other yet, I just want to introduce myself. My name's Maria Rigo, and I have been in the fitness industry for over 22 years, and I love helping both women in menopause and women who struggle with autoimmune issues feel, move, and look their best. And I work with clients all over the country who want to feel better in their bodies, whether that be to lose weight or belly bloat, improve their sleep and energy, or help them get out of pain and just overall feel stronger. Now, my goal for myself, as well as for my clients, is for us to live our second half with strength and vitality and to love life and the way we feel, move, and look. Now, if you don't know me, you're probably thinking, okay, yeah, that's great, but why are you able to help me figure out my issues and make changes in my life? Well, I'm both a woman in menopause and one who lives with autoimmune disease. Back in 1993, when my youngest son was an infant, um, he's now 30, I still had baby weight to lose and I had no energy. And every afternoon, I'd either have to lay down on the couch and I would tuck my th then three and a half or four year old son behind me and put on a Disney movie so that I could feel if he got away from me while my little guy was sleeping or I'd have to live on coffee and realize I was only 25 years old at the time. So I should have been vibrant and full of energy. So this was not right. And I was lucky enough that my gynecologist at the time, she was diligent and she noticed my symptoms and she sent me for blood tests. I was diagnosed with Hashimo Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And thankfully, I was able to get that under control, both through my lifestyle changes and through the medication. And I was also able to lose the weight and keep it off. And that was almost 30 years ago. So what I've done for myself, I've replicated and I've studied how to help people do this, and that's how I now help my clients. Um, I'm a coach. This is my background, and just so that you can see some of my credentials, and I am more than halfway through in my course at the Integrative Institute for Nutrition. Um, that's a year-long course, and I will be then considered a health and wellness coach as well. Um, I also like to always throw in there too, way back in my earlier life, I attended French cooking school and I have taken my love of cooking and applied that now to healthy recipes. So in my six pillars of wellness program, I also provide recipes for my clients so that they're learning how to cook at home, make easy meals, things that are nutritious and not high in processed foods or just processed carbs, a lot of focus on good proteins and fat. So if you want to live your second half with vitality and vigor and feel your best, I think you're in the right place. I created the Six Pillars of Wellness and it's a 12-week program. And I'm gonna teach you about all of those pillars here tonight. Now, I wanna make sure that you get the most out of this, but for a quick second, let's go to a disclaimer. Um, and just, I have to just say this, but you know, the information I'm providing to you today is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It should not be taken as a treatment plan or to replace uh, anything from your medical professionals, or if you're working with a dietitian, you should absolutely follow what they are telling you. And I know that everyone is different. So I like to make myself available to you. So during these next five days, you have this course and you will be able to reach out to me with any questions you would possibly have. So you could either reach me at mariarigo at boundlessbalance.com or I'm on Instagram at boundless underscore balance, or you can also reach out to me on Facebook at boundless balance and just shoot me any questions you have because I really want you to get a lot of takeaways and feel like moving forward, you have um, these tools in your toolbox to make your menopause and your second half of life your best yet. So let's start right away with talking a little bit about menopause. 
And I just want to say, I think it gets a bad rap. Do you remember back to the days of dealing with your period? Oh my gosh. Or do you remember those days when you were bleeding so hard you were afraid to leave the house? And what about worrying about getting pregnant or having to deal with birth control? Isn't it liberating? I mean, I can go for hikes and bike rides and on vacations and out with friends without ever having to worry about an accident again. So just you know, take a moment and think back to those days and realize we are liberated. And the Japanese have a term for menopause that I love and I refer to it a lot. It's called the second spring. It's like we're getting a second chance at adulthood without dealing with all that other stuff. There's so much freedom we have in, in many aspects of our life that we didn't have before. And much of that comes along with menopause. Now, I know there's a few, let's call them issues, that come with menopause, but they're more like side effects than direct causes. And in the six pillars of wellness, we're going to create more hormonal balance naturally to help get rid of these side effects and make positive changes so you can start loving your second spring. Now, in my six pillars of pal- uh, blah, 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 my six pillars of wellness, sorry, I get excited to be here and I've got so much information to share with you. But in my 12-week program, we incorporate mindset as well. So let's talk about our mindset right away. Are you a woman who sees menace- menopause as a liberation and a second spring? Or are you a woman who thinks menopause is a reason you might have to, you know, weight to lose, or the belly bloat is the cause, or sleep, lack of sleep and lack of energy. And it's, you're going to have to live like that forever. Or are you the kind of woman that you thrive, you want to thrive in menopause. You want to ditch those excuses and reasons we've heard all of our lives. And it's not our fault if we think that way, because we've kind of been taught that, right? Like, You'll hear people talk about menopause and they make it sound like it's a prison sentence. But I have to tell you, this is the rest of your life. And so if you want to enjoy your life and have fun with others and engage in activities and travel and play with your grandkids and stay independent, well, we need to embrace where we're at, honor where we're at. First of all, give ourselves a big pat on the back and say, you've done a great job up till now, and now we're just going to improve, and we're just going to keep growing from here. So it's all in your mindset, like I said. So there are those women who think, oh, I don't have the time, and I'm not going to make the commitment to self-care. I just, I have so much other things I have to worry about. And they're struggling, and they're suffering. And then there's the women who do commit to taking care of themselves, who enjoy their 50s and beyonds. And I can tell you from experience, for myself, of working with hundreds of women, that the ones who take time for themselves and follow the six pillars of wellness are the ones who are enjoying good health and wellness. And I want to just ask you right now as a little side note, just ask yourself, How do you define good health and wellness? How's it going to feel in your body? Do you feel it now? Is there room for improvement? Or are you thinking to yourself, I don't know. I don't know what that feels like. Well, no matter where you're at in your journey, my six pillars of wellness will work for you because we meet you where you're at and then we take you to where you want to be, to where you want to go. Now let's get started with our first pillar, which is sleep. And the reason I begin with sleep is because without enough of it, without enough quality sleep and enough time sleeping, the other pillars won't work as well. But once we balance our sleep, you're going to start to notice all of the other pillars become easier to work on and you're going to get better results from them. Now, I just want to talk about a study that I learned about in the Flipping 50 Menopausal Specialist course. There were two groups of women, um, 
one we're going to call the long sleepers and they were allowed to stay in bed for nine hours and then the second group was called the short sleep group and these ladies only got to be in bed for six and a half hours and both groups lost weight but the long sleep group lost more weight and more importantly they lost more fat so they didn't lose as much muscle mass and if you've ever worked with me, you know what I say, you've got to build muscle. We have to keep our muscle. This is like so important for aging well. And if you wanna lose weight, you don't really wanna lose weight, you want to lose fat. Quality sleep is the most passive way to build muscle. So right there, you can see we've got to get good sleep. But anyway, I went off on a little bit of a tangent. <laughs> the ladies in the nine hour sleep group lost more fat and therefore as they continued on, they kept building more muscle and losing more fat. And it's really not about what you can fit in, it's about what you need. So. I know we want to take care of others. We've got work to get finished or you want to hang out and watch a movie or a Netflix series, but making time for quality sleep is the most important thing to help you make the changes you want. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to get there. But first, let's talk about why it's so important. And that's going to be because it's going to affect our cortisol. Now, eight hours of sleep and it, you know, it could be anywhere from seven to nine hours of sleep. And I'm, you're probably going to hear me say this quite a bit. We are all bio individual. What's good for me isn't necessarily good for you. It isn't good for your sister or your girlfriend. We have to really become detectives and notice how our bodies feel. And, but they do say the average would be like everyone's heard seven to nine hours. But in that, let's just say eight hours of sleep, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. is going to be better than 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. So if you're someone who's a night owl and you go to sleep at 11 or 12, you're not all of a sudden going to start going to sleep at 9, 10 o'clock at night, right? But we can encourage you to start thinking about inching your way closer to an earlier bedtime by maybe 15 minutes every few nights or every other week, just till you get closer to that 10 o'clock bedtime. And that's gonna get you your better results from your exercise and your nutrition. And you'll start to see how all these pillars come together because if you're getting the exercise and proper nutrition, but your body's not getting the sleep you need, it's gonna be really hard to make the changes you want. Now I'm on cortisol. so. Let's talk about cortisol. Your circadian rhythm dictates your hormones and your hormones can affect your circadian rhythm. Your cortisol is produced in your adrenal glands and cortisol gets a bad rap. Uh, I think we think like, oh my gosh, I have cortisol. Well, we all need cortisol, but we wanna keep it balanced. So I just wanna point out a couple of um, things in your body that cortisol is responsible for and what it helps with. Now, it increases glucose in times of stress so that you can run from a predator. You're probably thinking, well, I don't really have a predator these days. Well, yeah, but we're dealing with our prehistoric body, right? We're dealing with our DNA and our genes from, you know, at least a couple thousand years ago, right? So if our body thinks we have to run from a predator, it's going to release cortisol and glucose. They go hand in hand. And if the glucose is high and you're not gonna use it really soon, it can lead to diabetes, prediabetes, and insulin resistance. And if you keep this pattern up with no tools in place to help, you're going to keep your glucose levels elevated all the time. So, Cortisol also acts as an anti-inflammatory to a point. It works with your immune system and it also affects your salt water balance. It can improve your energy and your alertness and it reduces autoimmune risks through um, something in your thymus gland and it also affects your memory. 
And cortisol is multifaceted. Too much or too little can cause problems. So you can see why keeping our cortisol levels optimized is an important first step in hormonal balance and why sleep is an important first step in balancing cortisol. Every cell in your body contains receptors that cortisol affects. So let's talk a little bit about quality sleep. We know we need to get enough of it and we know we don't want to be stressed out. So here are some ways that are going to help you sleep a little bit better. I want you to use dark and light to your advantage. So do you look out the window or get outside first thing in the morning, 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Now, of course, those of us who live, you know, in the Midwest, we're not going to be outside maybe for 15 minutes on a December or January morning, but I purposely have my coffee in the morning facing an Eastern window because I want to have that daylight in my eyes. Also, workouts. We're going to talk about this more when we get to our exercise pillar. You want to have your workouts early in the day, especially those more intense workouts. And if you are a coffee drinker or a caffeinated tea drinker, limit that to two cups in the morning. We also want to finish eating at least three hours before bed. We don't want our body to have to figure out, is it time to rest or digest? We want to let it rest. Also, avoiding alcohol use close to bedtime. This one's a big one that I sometimes get flack on from clients, but turning off our screens at least 90 minutes before we go to bed. And that has a lot to do with blue light and just maintaining that balance so that we're not getting those cortisol levels elevated again. If you struggle with quality sleep, um, having slow release carbs at dinner, so like sweet potato or um, quinoa, that can help you. Also, magnesium with your evening meal can also help. And you can start a soothing bedtime routine. So some of the things that I do and I recommend to clients, and once again, we're all bio-individuals, so we need to figure out what works best for us. But instead of being on those screens 90 minutes prior to bedtime, how about taking a hot bath, putting some Epsom salts with some lavender oil or doing some melt? or meditation, or breath work, or just getting, you know, take that hot shower, hot bath, and get into bed and read or journal, and um, snuggling a loved one, you know, being in contact with somebody we love. And if we don't have a loved one that lives with us, but we have our pet, that, that works too, just having that connection to something. And then when you're turning in, You want to really think about sleeping in a dark, cool, and quiet room. Um, You you know, if you need to use a sleep mask or earbuds or um, what are those things called? Not earbuds that have the connection to our iPhones, although you could use that too if you need it for white noise, but a white noise machine works better. But earplugs on my list right here. you know, to keep it quiet for yourself. And then remembering that your bedroom is your quiet space for sleep only. It's not somewhere you're going to do work on a computer. It's not somewhere you're going to exercise. Try not to have your exercise equipment in your bedroom. Just try to have it for sleep and quiet. And that way you'll help associate your bed with rest. And that's what we want. And then one more thing is lavender. Lavender is a very relaxing scent. Again, if that's not your thing, there's another scent that helps quiet your mind and you prefer that, well, then go for it. Buy your lotion or your essential oils and do that. So you have space in your notebook, in your workbook, and I want you to use that to conduct your own sleep study. So what we're going to do is you're going to explain to your family that you're not going to be going out or staying up watching movies, and you're going to pick two nights minimum. It's wonderful if you could do this for three nights even or four, but I figure, you know, if we work, if we have commitments during the week, two nights, we can at least get this done on the weekend. So you're going to just, the minute you start to feel drowsy, you're going to go to bed. 
<laughs> you're going to go to sleep. So that means we're not going to have any TV or screens on that evening. And you are going to go to sleep as soon as you get tired. You're going to follow our tips from above. And then I want you to record in your workbook what time you turned in, how well you slept, what you feel like your sleep was like, and then how you, what time you wake up, and then how well you feel the next day. Now, you have to get into bed, but that doesn't mean that you can't snuggle a loved one or you can't read a book or you can't journal for a few minutes. So I don't, want feel, I don't want you to feel like you have to like, boom, get right into bed, but really listen to your body. Again, we're talking about mindset. We're talking about being more mindful and getting into touch with how our body works and feels. And so paying attention and just going to sleep. And then after you do this, I want you to deduct the amount of sleep you usually get from the hours of sleep you got during your study. So you're going to do that for two, you know, one or two more nights. So let's say you normally get six and a half hours of sleep and during your study, you slept eight and a half hours because you're not going to alarm, allow an alarm clock to go off. You're just going to get up when you get up. Okay. If you slept two hours more on both of those nights, you're going to know you have a two-hour sleep deficit. And we can't make up the sleep deficit on the weekends for what we lose during the week. Our body doesn't work that way. But you're going to try to then change your sleep habits so that you can start getting closer to that eight and a half hours that you need every night. Remember what I said earlier, everyone's different. Some people are going to need seven hours. Some people are going to need nine. And that's why it's helpful to do your own sleep study. Now, this is a long testimonial, believe it or not. I actually um, cut a lot of it out. But Michelle did my last six pillars of wellness 12 week program. And this is what she wrote about before we met, I was in a bad spot. I was really struggling. I tried a variety of things, I just couldn't get anything to become habit forming. I was definitely not comfortable in my own skin. I was confused about what to eat and when to eat and my sleep. My sleep was just awful. It's funny. I don't even know if I know how bad it was versus being on the other side. Now I look back and go, it was actually worse than what I originally thought. When I saw your program, I thought this seems like a foundation. This seems like maybe I have the ability to figure this out. It's not one thing. It's multi-pronged. When I think about the pillars, that's what I think. What it gave me was a foundation to grow from. It was in steps. It wasn't so overwhelming. I follow my pillars and I get my sleep and eat nutritiously. I didn't think I could incorporate intermittent fasting, but I do. I'm so strict with it, but strict in a positive way. I now wake up feeling energetic. I don't feel hungry. I'm into a size eight. I was a 12 and it's funny. It's not the weight loss. It's the shape of my body. I have my waist back. It's incredible. My bum is firmer. There's just things that are different in my pants, feeling different in my pants. You don't have to worry about where you're starting. You just take the leap of faith and where you're going and acknowledge the baby steps. Acknowledge it. Every little chance you get by saying something positive to yourself. It's important. Yes, it's a leap of faith, but be committed and not just because you want to weigh less, but because you want to be committed to feel better on the other side. And that was my client, Michelle. And sleep was huge for her. So I, I stress sleep at the beginning. And I want to really make sure that you guys get that under control. Let's move on to stress relief. So it's almost just as important as sleep kind of is as important. Because if we are stressed out all the time, it will affect our sleep and our circadian rhythm gets thrown off and then the cycle just continues. And then menopause, when our estrogen drops, our cortisol levels naturally go up. Now, we talked about cortisol. It can be anti-inflammatory. It can help us improve energy and alertness and memory, and it can prevent autoimmune risks. But just like Goldilocks, too little or too much can cause problems. So... I want to interject here about adrenal fatigue for a second because, as I said, we're all different. And what I talk about in the six pillars today, a lot of it is just going after the, the normal person, the normal woman in menopause. But we're all, we all have different things going on. And some of us 
are struggling with adrenal health. And so these are just some symptoms that you may feel if you have adrenal fatigue. It's also called HPA axis dysfunction. So I'm not going to dive too deep into it, but when your body is always under stress, your brain sends a chemical to your hypothalamus, which then sends a chemical to, to your pituitary glands, which then sends a chemical to your adrenal glands, and then your adrenals start kicking off cortisol all the time. And that's when you feel like you might have some of these symptoms. And that's when cortisol is what we consider bad, right? So cortisol is not bad, but it needs to be in balance. So if you sleep and you're getting eight hours of sleep, nine hours of sleep, and you're waking up and you're feeling groggy or hungover, that's, that could be a symptom if you feel exhausted, no matter how much sleep you get. And if you get food cravings and you can't explain them, and especially salty foods, that could also be a symptom. And if you just can't make it through the day without coffee or sugar, or you got to put your head down, those are all symptoms that you are suffering with something going on with your adrenals. And this might seem counterintuitive, but if you're exhausted during the day, but then in the evening, like five, six, or seven o'clock, you get the second wind and you can't go to sleep, that is another sign that you could very possibly have adrenal fatigue. Now, I just want to put that out there because if you do have any of these symptoms, I said earlier with sleep, going to bed at 10 and waking up at 6 is better than going to bed at midnight and waking up at 8 and that you don't want to necessarily sleep in. But if you have these symptoms, you may need to help reset your adrenals. So you still don't want to go to bed at 11, 12, 1. You want to go to bed at 10. But if there's any possible way to allow your body to sleep until 8, 9 o'clock, because around 8 o'clock in the morning is when our adrenals reset, especially for like two weeks, you might be able to help solve your own problem. So some symptoms that your body's telling you, I am stressed out, like we said, poor sleep and quantity and quality, um, exhausted, but you can't sleep, your body hurts. And that includes stomach ache, headaches, muscles and joints. But think about how your digestion is, how your stomach feels, or if you've got skin problems, right? If you have forgetfulness or irritability, or if you are just so inflexible, like, you know, your spouse or your kids or your partner says, you know, the last minute, like, oh, I'm going to be five minutes late and you fly off the handle and you're like, God, that's not really like me. Okay. Those are all symptoms that your body is telling you, you are stressed. Now, I just want to loop back to the predator. In our modern life, we don't really have to worry about, you know, a lion or a bear chasing us, right, in everyday life. But your body, your nervous system doesn't decipher between real, imagined, or anticipated stress. And whether you get a phone call from, you know, or an, you know, phone call from a loved one, or you're in a fight with your spouse, or you get an email at work that just makes you really upset, your body's thinking that's the predator. The hormones are being released, right? So that's okay. I mean, that's why our body is made the way it is. But if we're under that all the time, that's when you're really, you're just having too much release of cortisol and glucose. And your body cannot get back into balance. And so um, I just want to make sure I'm covering everything. We already talked about how excess glucose in our body that's not needed can lead to diabetes, prediabetes, and insulin resistance. So we want to make sure that if we're dealing with belly bloat and weight gain, that we're not dealing with some of these symptoms as well, because I've had clients in the past where they 
they're like, I don't understand why I just gained all this weight during the stressful period of my life. I'm not eating anymore. Well, this might be that answer. So I'm just kind of going on and on because I want you to really think if you are struggling with any of this stuff, are you starting to see now how it all ties together? So let me just look back at my notes for one second. I just want to make sure we covered everything. I feel like I might've skipped internal and external stresses. I did. So real quick, other stressors that can affect you are diet, either too little or lack of nutrition or too much, exercise and medications. And I don't want you to think, oh good, I don't have to exercise. We're going to talk about exercise next. Um, toxins and makeup, shampoo, cleaning products, plastics, because toxins are stored in fat. So we want to reduce and eliminate whenever possible. I don't ever want you to feel like you have to obsess over something. I really created these pillars to make this a holistic approach, but where you can reduce toxins and where you can replace things that would maybe create toxicity in your bottom, that's huge. And then emotional stressors we talked about from work, family, finances, health, they all come together to kind of create higher stress levels. So regardless of the stress, we want to be able to kind of balance off so that our allostatic load stays even. So your allostatic load is the accumulated wear and tear from daily life that can lead to disease over time. And if we kind of think about it as like a bucket, over time, if you don't empty your bucket, the bucket will overflow and that'll cause a mess. Some of us have a bucket that's not quite full and we may want to optimize the bucket. Others of us, our bucket is about to overflow, but then there's some of us that the bucket is overflowing all over the place and making a mess. Now, there's also resiliency, and resiliency is the, the ability to bounce back. So if you can cope and adapt to stressful situations, how quickly can you do this? Because that's key. So let's talk a little bit now about how well do you think you can bounce back or cope with stress in your ongoing daily life? You've got a little spot in your notebook and I want you to take a moment. You can hit pause, use your workbook and you'll see on the one page on a level of one to five, assess your stress levels. Think about an average week. Where do you feel like you're at? So if one is you, you know, you're not really stressed out at all, or five is like you're stressed out all the time, just circle one of those numbers. And then importantly too, is how well do you feel you're able to cope with that stress? Do you have mechanisms in place to help you relieve or deal with that stress? How quickly can you bounce back? So one would be quickly and five would be not so quickly. So if you're closer to a five on both of these scales, we're going to need to work on that stress relief. And one of the ways we do that is lightening our load. Now, ways to offset stress are the melt method, breath work, meditation, gratitude, and worry journaling. And I'm just going to give you one quick way uh, with breath work right now is if you inhale, inhale for the count of four or five. And then as you exhale, double that. So if you're inhaling for a count of four, try to exhale for a count of eight. If you're inhaling for a count of five, try exhaling for a count of 10. And again, you could pause this video, just kind of notice where you feel like your heart rate's at right now. Notice if you feel pretty calm or if you feel a little stressed or agitated. Try doing that a couple of times and just seeing if you can help bring down that stress reflex. And then there's more ways to offset stress as well, too. So scheduling breaks in your day, just taking five to 10 minutes to sit and rest, to do nothing a couple of times a day. Um, you know, we, we live in a society where busier is better, and that's not the way our bodies were made, you know, and how they were made to deal. We were meant to be out in nature. We were meant to be eating lots of dark leafy greens and bright colored vegetables and berries and meats that haven't been processed and organic things without all kinds of toxins sprayed on them. 
and laughing and journaling, being with your friends, taking a bath, hugging pets and babies and loved ones are all ways to bring your stress level down. And I just want to talk for a second about boundaries because sometimes not having boundaries, we, as women, I think too, we tend to want to do everything for everybody and we don't necessarily want to make the investment in time or money for ourselves. And we need to think about that because, you know, not to get, not to get dark or too deep, but if you don't take care of yourself now, What's your life going to look like in 5, 10, 20, 25, 30 years? You want to take care of yourself so that you can not only enjoy the way your life is right now, but moving forward. I want to read you one more testimonial. I know some of these are long and I apologize, but this was from Debbie. Debbie was in the first time I ran the Six Pillars 12-week program and she did great. And She just said before she decided to do the Six Pillars program, she had digestive issues, weak knees. She didn't sleep good. She was stressed out and she knew she needed to make some changes, but she was hesitant to spend the time and the money on herself. Well, now since she did the program, she has no regrets. She has a stronger body. And even though she's in her late 60s, she's eliminated most of her knee pain, which that was huge on her mind, by the way. She really worried about that. Her digestive issues went away, her sleep improved, and she just felt so much happier. She wrote, I also have less stress because I've improved my body and mind so much. This program has changed my life. Plus, it's one program that I can stick to for life with the fasting, eating nutritiously, following the sleep tips, weightlifting, strength moves, Pilates, and melting. I'm able to maintain all of my gains from the program. She went on to say some nice things about me, but more importantly, the changes she made in her body and in her mindset have changed her life. We're still in contact. That was oh, oh, about a year ago that she went through the program and we chat all the time. So now we're going to kind of move towards exercise. And I mentioned that exercise can create more stress in our body, um, but just for a short amount of time. And like I said, cortisol is not bad, but that's one of the reasons why I say moving our workouts to earlier in the day is going to be more beneficial. So we're going to want to decrease the um, the amount of stress that exercise causes by increasing our recovery during and after exercise. We're going to talk about this a little bit deeper. So you want to plan out your week with healthy workouts. And it's in the recovery from the strength work that you actually build muscle. So you might know this, but you're not building muscle when you're lifting weights. You're actually breaking down the muscle and it's in the recovery that you build the muscle. And remember in our sleep pillar, we talked about sleep is the most passive way for us to build muscle. We just have to remember that as we age, it takes more effort for our body to repair. And we want to make sure that we allocate proper recovery time. So there's all forms of exercise and we are going to talk about cardio. We're going to talk about strength training. In the six pillars, we do include Pilates. Um, yoga is fabulous, Tai Chi. And then I also like to think about daily movement. That's not your exercise, but it's really important, especially in menopause. So let's talk about cardio for a second. And I wanted to give you a visual. So you've got your training zones and these are not heart rate zones. These are actually zones that we're going to kind of think about. We want, remember your body doesn't lie. So when you listen to your body, you are going to get better results. So let's think about level one, and that is the base of your pyramid, what you should be getting the most of, and that is movement all day long. Level two is you're you're working a little bit harder. So let's talk about breathing too. In level one, you're breathing through your nose the whole time, and you're talking. You could, you know, you could be working in the garden or working in the yard or cleaning the house and you're talking, right? You're walking from the car to the grocery store or wherever. You're talking, you're breathing through your nose. Level two is you're going to be working a little bit harder. So now you are still breathing through your nose, but if you're talking with your friend and you're going for a walk and you're going up a hill, you might breathe a little bit through your mouth or your sentences might get a little bit shorter. 
but you could still maintain this pace for quite a long time. Zone three is what I consider the not so beneficial zone. This is where I think a lot of people hang out. They get past zone two and now they're breathing through their mouth and their nose and they're trying to stay here. They're on an elliptical or they're, you know, on a bike or they're, you know, trying to run, but they're just not getting the most bang for their buck. When we get to level four, we're not talking so much anymore. So now if you are walking with your girlfriend up the hill, you're purposely not answering her question because you want to wait till you get over the hill so that you can kind of catch your breath. And then number five is you're not talking at all. So what we want to do is spend most of our day in number one. But our workouts throughout the week should mostly be in levels one and two. Okay, so you are going to want to do workouts. We're going to touch on that. And then you're going to want to do some high intensity interval training. It's also called HIT, And that will be where you're at zone one for a warm up. You're going to go, you could get into zone two, into zone three, and then you're going to shoot up to zone four or five just for, I'm going to say 30 seconds, but remember we're all bio-individual. So if this is newer to you, you're not going to have to hold it for 30 seconds. Maybe for you, it's you're walking and now you're going to walk really fast for 10 or 15 seconds and then come back down to zone one. And that's what we consider a high intensity interval. So I just want to give you this, um, this example. It does not have to be this way, but if you warmed up for five minutes in zone one and two, and at five minutes, you push as hard as you can for 30 seconds, at 5.30, five minutes and 30 seconds, you would want to come back down for a minute and a half to recover to zone one. And then you're going to push back up at seven and a half minutes up to zone four or five for just 30 seconds. And at eight minutes, you're going to come back down and recover back down to zone one. And then repeat this for a total of 15 to 20 minutes maximum with a cool down for five minutes in zone one to two. So the longest this would take you would be 30 minutes. Now, let me give you a little help here. If you are not working out regularly, you're not aiming for this right now. Let's just get you walking for 15 to 20 minutes a day, okay? As a regular workout. Now, that's, this is in addition to your daily movement. And then getting that up to 20, 30 minutes. And then once you feel like I've got this, then you're going to start trying to incorporate no more than 15 to 20 minutes maximum of a high intensity interval. And you could do this two or three times a week, but no more than 45 minutes a week. I typically only do two HIIT workouts a week, and sometimes it's only one. But when I'm in the winter time and I can really monitor it, I'm doing two a week on my trainer indoors. This can be done dancing around your living room. If you love to dance, dance, keep it kind of, you know, low and steady and then jump a little bit, do some jumping jacks or walk up and down your stairs or do something that's going to elevate your heart rate. But your body doesn't lie. You're going to listen to yourself and you're going to always allow yourself time to recover. So you're never going to do this two days in a row. So if I were going to do a high intensity interval training on a Monday, well, this, let's just go to a sample week. I made you guys an example. Let's say I'm going to, let's say I'm going to start my week on Sunday. I have time to go for a walk. So I want to go for a nice hike. I'm in cardio zone two. On Monday, I'm going to do a HIIT workout. So I'm in zone one and two and four and five. On Tuesday, I'm going to do weights. On Wednesday, I'm going to do another HIIT workout. Thursday, active rest. So I've got my daily movement. Friday, I'm going to do weights. And Saturday, I'm going to do cardio in zone one to two. And maybe I'm going to do that for 45 to 60 minutes. So you can see this is not requiring a lot of time. You don't need a gym membership and you don't need any special devices. You can do this by listening to your body. Now let's move on to strength. So I want to talk to you about adding a circuit 
into your life. And we talked about building muscle and I cannot stress enough how important muscle building is, strength training is in midlife. And if you haven't done any up till now, again, you're always going to meet yourself where you're at and then we're going to take you to where you want to go. So we've got pushing moves. If you look at me when I'm lined up, um, I'm up against my Pilates barrel, but pretend that's your kitchen counter, okay? And you're going to do push-ups. So you're going to get up against your kitchen counter. If you look at where my head is, my head is lined up over my shoulders. My shoulders are over my hips and my hips are over my feet. I'm on the ball of my uh, foot there. I'm not, I don't have my heels down. Um, and then I'm doing a chest press. So you can see I'm laying down. I still have my spine lined up. And I don't think you can see my cursor, but I always like to tell my clients, neck long, chin tucked, chest wide, ribs in the body, and pelvis neutral. And we go a lot into this and into proper form and biomechanics in our 12-week program. Um, let's go on to pulling moves. We think about we could pull and I, this is just a band. This is just with a door attachment. I have these available. This is pretty a cheap setup. I think for under $25, you could add this in, or I also have super bands, but I'm not here to sell you product. I'm just telling you that a pulling motion, you could also do a free weight if you've got free weights at home. But if you're starting from scratch, Bands and tubes are a really easy way to add that in, but free weights are the bomb. So you're going to do a pulling motion, a pushing motion, a lower body move. So uh, this first slide is a split squat. And again, you can see my head is lined up over my shoulders, over my ribs, over my hips. My knees are not going out over my toes. And then this is a bridge. And then I also like to have you add in a rotation. This is showing a wood chop, but you could also add in like a Russian twist where you're seated on the floor and you're just rotating your ribs, thinking of your obliques. So this is just a really easy strength circuit. And I, you're going to just pick one push, one pull, but then you're going to pick two lower body moves. So either a hip bridge, a split squat, squat, or a deadlift and then a rotation move. And that could also be like a oblique curl that people do laying on the floor. The most important thing is to start with proper form. So you're gonna start at about 12 to 15 repetitions, really paying attention that you're doing it right. And then as you get, after about, if you've never been lifting weights before, you're gonna to wanna to give yourself like four to five weeks, building up to heavier weight and then you're going to start where you're going to fatigue at 10 repetitions because we really need 10 reps to fatigue at 10 reps to be able to uh, create that muscle building effect we're looking for. And by doing a circuit, number one, you're allowing for proper recovery time per muscle group, but you're also saving time. And I know how precious our time is. So this circuit you can get through in about 20 minutes. Now realize if you've never lifted weights or if you haven't lifted them properly and you need to learn proper biomechanics, if you need to learn how to do it correctly, it's gonna take a little bit of time to learn it. But once you learn it, you've got it for life. And if you need to invest in a couple of dumbbells or kettlebells or bands or tubes, what a good investment. It's in yourself. And that's what we need to do is just think about how can we take better care of ourselves. That's why I call it all self-care. Now let's leave this pillar and move on to nutrition. And remember, we are all bio-individual, right? So intermittent fasting, I'm going to just talk about that adrenal fatigue again. Remember, if we have adrenal fatigue, we're going to sleep in a little bit later if we can. But um, we also want to talk about intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, and this is based on research, it can be beneficial to women in menopause as a lifestyle regime that can improve women's health in, health in many folds. However, I'm going to give you a caveat. If you have adrenal fatigue, if you suspect you have adrenal fatigue, I don't want you to intermittent fast right now. If you have autoimmune disease, I would ask you to talk to your healthcare provider because everybody's different. But if you're looking for a way to improve your health and wellness, to create autophagy, which means 
uh, cleaning your cells basically to help prevent disease. Intermittent fasting is a great way to go. Um, and the, the, what I use is what, like a time restricted feeding, 16 hours, no eating, eight hours eating. So you're not eating snacks in between meals. And I don't want you to think that if you're going to do this, it gives you the green light to eat more calories during those eight hours that you are eating that you did during 10 or 12 hours of eating. Um, and then of course, eating earlier in the day is huge in helping. And I don't want you to be afraid here and I don't want it to scare you off. You don't have to intermittent fast. Everybody is their own person. Listen to yourself. Um, but I just want to bring this to your awareness. That is definitely something that I'd love you to consider. And sometimes we have to make decisions and just, if you want to pause this video and ask yourself this question. Could I consider not eating after dinner? Like if you're a person who snacks at nighttime and you're trying to lose that belly fat or you're trying to lose excess weight, remember fat, not muscle, um, could I think about and make a commitment to myself that maybe for a week I'm going to try to just finish dinner, brush my teeth and be done for the day? That might be your way of intermittent fasting right now. Remember, meet yourself where you're at and take yourself where you want to go. Now, these are people that I um, listen to, I follow. Dr. Jason Fung uh, wrote The Obesity Code. I get a lot of my intermittent fasting information from him. Dr. Benjamin Bickman wrote Why We Get Sick. He really focuses on higher fat diets, and I don't mean hamburgers and cheeseburgers and french fries. Um, Mike Mutzel is high intensity health. He's got a blog out there. And Dr. Mary Claire Haber is the Galveston diet. And she has a lot of good information out there. I just want to share with you some of my hacks. First of all, you want to stay hydrated. Basically, uh, take your body weight and divide it in half. And that's how many ounces you'd want to think of starting with. And then I'd also like you to replace um, any ounces of water. Give yourself wa the amount of ounces of water for the amount of ounces of coffee you drink every day. So let's say you drink 24 ounces of coffee every day and you weigh 160 pounds. So 160 divided by 2, what is that? Uh, 85, 80? right? And then give yourself another 24 ounces onto that because you're drinking coffee. And then for every 30 minutes you are exercising, you would want to replace with eight ounces of water as well. And you want to think of fueling with nutritious foods. Now, this is what I follow. Remember, you are your own person. And if you need to talk to your healthcare provider or your dietitian, but this is what I recommend to my clients. This is what I do. Think of consuming less than 25 grams of added sugar. So when you look on a package, you're not necessarily looking at the total sugars, although that's very helpful too. And I don't want you eating a lot of packaged foods, but you're looking at the added sugars. You know, fruits and vegetables have sugars, but they're not added. They're, those fruits and vegetables have a lot of good things, nutrients, fiber in them that we need. So when you're eating packaged foods, you don't want to get more than 25 grams of added sugar a day. Strive for 25 or more grams of fiber a day, which can be hard to get in the American diet. So if you need to use a fiber supplement and then 25 grams of protein at each meal, you know, when you look at what's recommended daily allowances, a lot of times that's not for optimization. That is just for what you need to keep your body alive. And we don't want to just be alive. We want to optimize what we do. And then simple carbs are what we want to avoid. So most everything in a package, like I said, um, sugar, rice, pasta, breads, grains, cereals. And then you really got to look at labels. You don't have to record every number. You don't have to program everything into your phone if you're not the type of person that wants to do that. But I want you to be reading labels to get very curious and get very smart about where added sugars are coming into your life. And, you know, if I were coaching you and you came to me and you said, you know, I don't have a lot of time. Uh, to do all this other added self-care stuff, 
and you told me that you ate a lot of simple carbs, I think one thing I'd ask you to consider is, can you think about just making yourself aware of what's in the food you're eating? Because if you look at just like ketchup and uh, salad dressings and barbecue sauce, there's tons of sugar in there. How could you switch something in and crowd out those simple carbs with better foods for you? And you know, com complex carbs with fiber. We know this is good. And to me, chia seeds are a superfood. They are amazing. So making yourself chia pudding for your breakfast or your lunch, um, adding chia seeds to smoothies and salads is a great way to incorporate more quality fat, quality protein, and fiber. And here's just a list of foods that fight inflammation and foods that cause inflammation. And so if you can crowd out the foods that cause inflammation with inflammation fighting foods, you are already starting to incorporate healthier habits and getting yourself on those six pillars. Now, the easiest way to know that you're eating healthy is preparing your own food. You can meal prep, um, join the Boundless Balance free community because I have recipes in there. And like I said, I also provide recipes to my coaching clients and also to my Six Pillars 12-week clients uh, because I want you cooking at home as much as you can. I have an extremely busy life and I know I went to French cooking school, but that doesn't mean I have more time. And I do figure out ways and I share a lot of those ways with you on how to meal prep. And I'm just going to give you one quick example right now is that when I'm making a salad for dinner and I know I have to take lunch with me the next day, I have to go containers that I use. Um, they're BPA free. They can go in the dishwasher. I just keep chopping. So if I'm putting celery on my salad for dinner, it's also going in my bowl to go to work the next day. If I'm grilling chicken for dinner, I'm grilling enough to give me protein for lunch the next day. If I'm making salmon, leftover salmon is going to go on a salad. Just really easy ways to get those meals to become healthier and to give you more benefit. So don't chop when you're hungry. And if you don't bring it in the house, you will not eat it. So I promise you, if you struggle with snacking and eating things that you know are not benefiting you, don't even get, don't even let them in the front door or the back door. And having a plan, and that can look different for everybody, and we can talk about that more. Um, meal prep is another way. And then one of the easiest ways is, again, that mindfulness, slowing down. You know, many cultures have gratitude, prayer. I, we've gotten away from that in this busy lifestyle. We're eating as we're getting work done. We're eating as we're on our phone or watching TV. Or Let's just go back to sitting down and being grateful for the food in front of us and trying to chew your food. I talk a lot about digestive health and uh, that gut health and how you really, the first part of digestion is your chewing. So we need to slow down and chew more, not be just, you know, passing stuff down our throat. Now I've got one more testimonial I want to share. And this came from Nancy also in uh, one of my past programs. And she just wrote that since she started, oh, she tried to follow a healthy program and it was always tough. She had a tendency to bounce around from diet to diet or exercise program for a few days, but never really had much progress. But since she started the Six Pillars 12-week program, she was amazed at how easy intermittent fasting was and how good it made her feel. She wrote, I also learned how to simply incorporate strength training into my week and the benefits of high-intensity cardio exercise. So these are all things... I, I included her testimony because in part of a testimony, I must not have had it in this one, she wrote about having sugar cravings and she was really able to kick her sugar cravings by listening to these helpful tips. So the next pillar I want to talk about, and I appreciate you hanging in with me and we're almost done, so stay with me, but this is huge and this is the MELT method. And I include this in the six pillars of wellness because in my opinion, and due to research, I think too, some research, that 
your connective tissue and your nervous system have to remain balanced in order for you to feel good, and especially as we age. So the MELT method is something I was trained in in 2013. I'm a level five MELT method instructor, and I swear to God, this this changed my life and it changed the life of my clients. And I incorporate MELT into every client's program, uh, coaching clients, and and my 12 uh, week clients because the benefits are huge. It eases stress and tension. It improves your sleep and digestion. It turns down the sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight response, and it helps turn up your parasympathetic nervous system, which helps you with resting and digesting. It helps get rid of aches and pains. It improves your lymphatic flow, and it helps to strengthen your immune system. The benefits are endless, and I sometimes almost am brought to tears when I'm talking to a client who struggles with pain, who has such debilitating pain that they can't enjoy their life, that they're going to see chiropractors and therapists and all these different people, and they come to me, and I say to them, I'm not saying you don't want to keep doing what you're doing. But when they finish a melt session and they're like, I cannot believe how much better I feel. The reason I'm almost brought to tears is because melt allows you to become your own hands-off practitioner. You learn how to be your own body care worker. You learn how to care for your body. And my goal is not to have clients for life that need me every single day. My goal is to teach my clients everything, to teach you how to simplify your workout and your eating and improve your sleep and reduce your stress and how to get out of pain. And in MELT, we have four R's that keep us out of pain, that keep us active and pain-free. That's reconnect, rebalance, rehydrate, and release. And then we also add in the two R's of neuro strength. And neuro strength R's are reintegrate and repattern. So in our 12 weeks together, we get our four R's going. And then we also add in neuro strength so that if you have knee pain because your hips are unstable, I teach you how to help stabilize your hips so that as you're doing your squats and your lunges and you're walking or you're on the treadmill or you're going upstairs or a hill, you're not going into your knees. You're using your hip stabilizing mechanism to hold you upright. We stabilize your core. We stabilize your shoulder girdle. And then quickly, because I want to get you through, the, the last pillar is breath work and meditation. And so... Breath work can be anything from diaphragmatic breathing, bucket handle breathing, box breath, melt 3D breath. There's so many different ways to improve our breathing. If you go into my free community on boundlessbalance.com, you'll see crocodile breathing and supine 90-90 breathing. Super simple ways to help not only with your diaphragm, but also your load share of your spine. And then we also can practice meditation. There's all these different forms of meditation. And you may see that some forms of meditation are very similar to forms of breath work. And the reason I list a bunch of things is we are also different. And if you're a really high energy person that's kind of type A, that has a hard time just sitting still and calming down, for me to tell you that you need to meditate for 10 or 15 minutes every day is not going to help you. So what I try to do is coach you into finding what works for you, what resonates with your body, and what feels good to you. Because you are your own master of your own universe, and I'm just here to guide people along the way. And then if we think about the six pillars of wellness, we want to start simple and small, and we want to stay consistent. And you can see how all of the pillars overlap to give you wellness. And I truly believe, and I live it in my own body and my clients live it in their bodies, that when we combine these six pillars, we feel better in our body. It's a holistic approach. It's mind and body. I coach you along the way to help you make lifestyle changes that will last a lifestyle. This is also a very small program. 
I only allow 10 women into the program at a time. I cap it off because you need my attention to help answer questions. And so I am with you every step of the way. And it's a proven system. We talk about mindset and mindset is everything. And so if you have any questions about mindset and you want to reach out to me, go right ahead. Um, it, it's not something I can teach you in an hour, but it's something we work on throughout our 12 weeks together, which is why this program is 12 weeks. And I'm not going to read all of the things we do in the program to you. You can go back and read this. You've got this for five days, but I want you to just know that I've given this a lot of thought. This has come from probably, oh, 20 years of putting this together and it does work. And um, I just, I'd love to have you join us. It's, it's a program that if you have felt coming into today that you're struggling, that people don't understand you and where you're at and you're going to a gym and you're just going through the motions and you're paying memberships and you're paying maybe trainers or buying programs online, but you're not getting your answers, your questions answered, and you're not seeing results um, and you want something deeper, but not harder, if that makes sense, this is the program for you. And like I said, I only take 10 people and we are starting August 21st. And I do this early so that you have days to watch this, but also part of the program is you're going to receive the things you need to get started. So aside from all the other things that are included, you're also going to get a melt roller and a ball kit, a melt band. You're going to get a super band and a door mount shipped to your front door so that you have those things. So when we start, you can start right away. And here's the bonus I wanted to give you guys. So this 12-week program is $19.97 regularly. And that may seem like a lot, but if you start to think about what you spend money on and how over the course of three months, $2,000 can come in and out, it can go pretty quickly. And I'm giving you $500 off of that price if you sign up before this masterclass ends. So you've only got till the end of this masterclass. If you started us late, you're a couple days behind. So I don't want you to think you've got a full five days. And if you'd like to, you can do $500 off and do it in four monthly payments of $424.17. And if for any reason you think that, oh, that's going to be a stretch for me, I can always work with you privately and we could stretch it out into five monthly payments. And the bonuses only last till this masterclass expires. Like I said, there's only 10 spots available. And the women who have been in my classes and my 12-week program in the past have seen such great changes for their life. So once you're finished, you're not just done. You're, you keep moving on. You keep growing and flourishing and you live with vitality and grace and strength moving into your second spring. So again, I want to thank you so much for being here. Don't hesitate. Reach out to me with any questions you have. I know this is an investment in yourself. And so if you need to, let's set up a 15-minute call. Let's get on a call together and go through your questions. Let's find out what your objections are. Are you nervous about you know, spending the money? Are you worried about if you're going to do it or not or be able to do it? Let's get on a call and let's address any concerns you have because I know you do and I know this is an investment. But I believe in you and I believe in this program and I believe that you can make your health and wellness dreams come true. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to talking to you soon.